There was another story that came out uh, while we were on break, I guess it was, about how the FBI initiated their investigation into the Trump campaign. And it turns out it was not initiated by the so-called Steele dossier. Uh, It was because the coffee boy in chief, George Papadopoulos, apparently um, had uh, an exchange with a top Australian diplomat, which the idea that Papadopoulos sat down with this guy in and of itself is indicative of where Papadopoulos was, how high he was in the administration or how important he was in the administration. But where Papadopoulos, I guess, basically said, hey, we're getting all sorts of dirt from the uh, Russian from the from the Russian uh, government. And this guy from Australia sort of freaked out a little bit and uh, sent word back to his uh, colleagues in the United States. You got a problem here uh, with this guy. Tell us more about it, because I know you wrote about it. Yeah, I mean, I followed this with interest over the over the break. It's kind of funny that stories like this, you know, broke like on I don't know, it was Christmas Eve or something. Um, but in any case, or on a Saturday during the Christmas break. But um, it's it's an interesting story because you have to, if you look at the context, um, what had been happening. The, the right wing has been throwing a lot of stuff at the wall, trying to figure out ways to to cover, uh, to protect Trump. And you've seen it with Fox News, and, you know, they've been going after Mueller, they've been going after the FBI, they've been doing all this. And what they settled on was this idea that it was the, tr- the dossier paid for by Hillary Clinton that spurred the FBI to go after Trump. And they, they've been hinting around, although not, most not coming right out and saying it, saying that it was Clinton who was played by the Russians to get Trump. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but if you stop and think about it, you'll, think, <laughs> you'll be able to figure out what it is they think, they've, they think they're saying here. Well, we've known for a while, by the way, that it wasn't the dossier that, that started the FBI investigation. The Guardian reported last spring that there had been um, numerous, numerous dispatches from GCHQ, the British spy agency, from the Dutch, the Polish, the Estonians, uh, the French, and the Australians. They had said this, that there had been people that had been picking up information, you know, talk, chatter on their spy channels between Russians and members of the Trump campaign. And they had been funneling that information to the U.S. since 2015. It didn't happen in 2016. The dossier didn't even really come together until the end of the summer of 2016. So this had all this information had been churning around in the intelligence community for some time. But what this story about Papadopoulos uh, confirms for us is that it was the that they had not. In fact, just one little detail: the Australian um, ambassador, or he's called the High Commissioner, but it's the same thing to London, who had had this, and it was a drunken conversation one night in a bar that was set up by some affiliates of the Israeli embassy. All of that is very murky, and we don't know why exactly that happened. But in any case, uh, they'd had this conversation, and Papadopoulos spilled the beans and said that he knew there was dirt, um, that the Russians had dirt on Hillary Clinton, which, according to his plea agreement, we already knew that he had been told this by a Russian uh, official you know, affiliated Russian person called the professor who he'd been talking to a month before. But what we didn't know was that he told anybody about it, and we certainly didn't know that he told the Russian ambassador to London about it. And the Russian ambassador didn't actually pass that information on right away. The The Australian Australian, Australian ambassador. Right, sorry. The Australian ambassador didn't didn't pass it on right away because he thought Papadopoulos was, you know, drunk and just basically spouting off. But right. when the when the DNC emails were released in July, right before the convention, then the, all the alarm bells went off and they immediately told the uh, Americans about it and they actually had a director to director meeting with the uh, director of the CIA uh, in person to talk about this. And at that point they realized, the intelligence community realized that they had to take this seriously. And the truth is, they had not known what to do about this. You have a Republican candidate for president who's apparently, his team is talking to the Russians all over the place, and they didn't know what to do about it, and so they dragged their feet. And, and all these other agencies 
GCHQ and others were kind of going, what is wrong with you? Don't you see what's happening here? And, and they finally, because of the release of the DNC emails, realized that they had to do something. And that is when they took the, uh, you know, took the information, they put it together, they alerted the campaigns, and they went to the Gang of 12, which are the top congressional um, intelligence people, and laid it all out. And that is when Mitch McConnell basically nixed it. They wanted them to say, look, let's do this bipartisanly, let's come out, let's warn the American people that this is happening and tell people, and we can warn the states and the local, um, you know, local election officials that they need to be extra careful, et cetera, et cetera. And McConnell said, absolutely not. If you do this, I will say it's a partisan attack, which is, you know, pretty amazing. That's got to go on Mitch McConnell's epitaph, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, on, his, on his tombstone, um, because that was kind of a... Uh, that was sort of a decisive um, decision that ended up altering the course of history um, because he refused to actually acknowledge it. So this Papadopoulos thing is very, very um, significant because it is the moment at which the uh, United States intelligence community, once that was revealed to them, that they went, okay, you know, this, I mean, Australia is a Five Eyes, you know, country. Right. It's that they're part of our very, very closely held intelligent, uh, intelligence allies. And so, you know, when they decided to do that, it was based upon this. Now, looking back, you see that Papadopoulos, and you have to go look at, you know, he's a more key figure than anybody realized. They call him the coffee boy. But he was having meetings with people that the coffee boy wouldn't normally have meetings with. And in fact, in the article that was in the New York Times um, that revealed all this, uh, they also revealed that he had set up, he, you know, the, in October, or actually it was late September, he had set up a meeting with Donald Trump and al-Sisi, the, uh, you know, the president of Egypt. So he, despite the fact that Sessions and all the rest of these people have subsequent to Papadopoulos' arrest, said, ah, you know, we... we we, we, you know, to reined the kid in. We told him that he couldn't, you know, he had to stop talking about Russia, and we didn't pay any attention to him. Uh, he was a big enough deal that he was actually setting up very, very high-level meetings very, very close to the election. So um, there's more to Papadopoulos than that anybody the, knows. Uh, right. And that, that plea agreement where he agreed, I mean, look at the stuff that he's involved in, and uh, he had a very generous plea agreement, too, just like Michael Flynn. And he's been talking since last July to the special counsel. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's 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 fascinating, and it, it I mean, it you know, the, it puts to rest, I think, a lot of uh, questions about you know what was the role of the the Steele dossier in mm -hmm. this investigation, which is really secondary tertiary confirmation of, of certain things that they Absolutely. found, and then maybe some other assertions. It also um, puts to rest. Uh, the question of, you know, were the Russians involved in the hacking of those emails? And, I mean, it's possible, I guess, that Papadopoulos was making it up and then was just coincidentally right that these emails came out. Or I guess maybe it's possible that somebody lied to him about what the source would be, but I'm not quite sure why someone would do that. So it really establishes a lot of stuff and puts it on the public record. All right, well, we got to take a break. When we come back, I want to uh, ask you about another uh, small bombshell um, as to why we are watching the Republicans, uh, particularly in Florida, attack Robert Mueller mm -hmm. with such vigor. we got to take a quick break. I'm talking to Heather Parton, or you may know her as Digby. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. <laughs> 